Hi friends, today we are going to discuss about the field due to an infinitely long stride uniformly charged wire. So this is my infinitely long uniformly charged wire with linear charge density lambda. So before going to start this topic, in the last class we discussed about the Gauss's law. What is my Gauss's law? The Gauss's law which is the total flux through a closed surface which is directly proportional to the, the charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface and the net charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface and inversely proportional to the epsilon naught. And we did some uh, NCRT problems. So if you have not yet watched that video, just go and watch. I will give that description uh, link in the description. Now my target is to find the electric field at any random point due to this uniformly charged uniformly straight uniformly charged wire so in case if you want to find my electric field at this point i am not able to find why because my electric field is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q by r square r k q by r square so my if you want to find electric field at random point p so the distance from here to here, the distance from here to here, the distance from here to here is not equal. So electric field due to this charge at this point P, the electric field due to this charge at point P, the electric field due to this charge at point P is not equal. This is different. So my electric field is different. So I am not able to use the electric field due to a point charge formula here. So what is the alternate way? Using Gauss law. So if you want to apply my Gauss law, I am going to construct a, a Gaussian surface. So here we are going to do just opposite. We are going to find the electric flux due to this charge and then from the electric flux we are going to find the electric field. So first I am going to start with, I am going to consider an Gaussian surface. It is an imaginary Gaussian surface of length L. Okay, of length L. So, with the radius R. So, my target is to find electric field at point P due to this charge configuration. So, what I am going to consider here, I am going to apply my Gauss law here. First target is I just want to find the electric flux through the Gaussian surface. So, this blue line is called your Gaussian surface. So, wherever you are applying your Gauss law, that closed surface is called your Gaussian surface. It is an imaginary surface, right? So, with uh, R, with radius R and length uh, L. So, from this positive charge, my electric field is always going outwards in this direction and in this direction. So, my electric field is always going outwards. If you are considering a cylinder, we have a three surface area. One is your, this flat surface is said to be N1, this surface is said to be N2. Two. But the problem here, the flux through this surface is 0 because my normal is perpendicular to the uh, electric field. So, the electric flux through this surface is 0, the electric flux this surface is also 0. So, only my curved surface area in this direction. So, my curved surface area which is parallel to my electric field which means my flux through the Gaussian surface only because of the, the curved surface area. So, I can simply write the flux through the Gaussian surface I may write phi equals to E into A cos 0 in this case ok cos 0 means E into a right sir here we are going to consider only the the curved surface area so e into 2 pi r l this is the uh, so surface area of the curved surface uh, curved surface area of the cylinder so e into 2 pi r l so this is the flux through the gaussian surface i am writing here sir next i am going to write the expression from the gauss's law so, from Gauss law, my electric flux 
which is equals to q by epsilon naught. So, if you want to find my q, I should know the linear charge density is called lambda. So, if I have my wire this is distributed along the one dimension wire, then I am going to use the term is called your linear charge density. So, lambda equals to q by l, therefore q is equals to lambda times l. So, if I substitute this q value here, I can simply write my electric flux E equal to lambda l by epsilon naught. So, this is my equation 2. So, by comparing these two equations, I can simply write the another equation. So, equation 1 equals to 2, I may write E into 2 pi R L equals to lambda L by epsilon naught. This L and this L get cancelled. Then I may write my equation E equals to lambda by 2 pi epsilon naught into R. So, if you want to write my electric field as a vector, so I am going to write a, a unit vector. So, these two are parallel to each other. So, I can simply write this is my electric field at a point P. It's a point P which is inversely proportional to R. Actually, the electric field due to a point charge which is inversely proportional to R square. In this case, it is my electric field is inversely proportional to R. So, this is the difference between the electric field due to a point charge and the electric field due to a uh, linearly charge distributed infinitely long uniformly charged wire. So, the electric if you are moving away from the center, the electric field due to a point charge decreases faster than the this case. Actually, so, this is the field due to an infinitely long long uniformly charged thin So, now we are going to study about the field due to an infinitely long uniformly charged a thin sheet. So, if I are supposed to consider a thin sheet of total surface area A, it is filled with charge of surface charge density sigma. So, my sigma is equal to Q by A, the total charge enclosed by this surface area by total surface area is called your surface charge density okay charge by unit area so i can simply write this is this we have a full of positive charges so my target is i just want to find the electric field at point p here i am not able to use the electric field formula here because my electric field is depending upon your r square but the problem here the distance from here to here is not equal to distance from here to here, it is not equal to distance from here to here. See if I place the sheet something like this, if you want to find electric field at this point, it is tough to find because it is a distance dependent quantity. So, my the distance from this charge to this point P is not equal to the distance from this charge to this point P, right. So, now I am going to consider and imaginary Gaussian surface to solve the problem. So, Gaussian surface is any surface, but it should be a closed surface. In this case also, I am going to consider a cylinder of, I am going to consider a cylinder here, the same distance we have another, the same cylinder here also. Because if I have a so, uh, linear charge density, sorry, surface density here, whatever the electric field produced by this sheet here, the same amount of electric field will produce at this point also. So, this charge density is not only responsible for electric field at this point, it is also responsible for electric field at the, this point at the same distance. So, the distance from here to here x, the distance from here to here also should be x, right. So, in the cylinder we have a three surface area. One is the curved surface area N3, we have a flat surface area N2, here we have a flat surface area N1. 
so this surface area is said to be yes this is also this is also a and i consider this is also a so listen carefully my electric field is always going outwards in this direction also electric field is going outwards in this also electric field is going outwards since it's a a partially charged thin sheet my electric field is always going outwards so next what is the flux through the gaussian surface so the total flux we have a three phases one is this phase so electric field which is parallel to n2 my cos theta is equal to 0 cos 0 means 1 so e into a here also my electric flux is going to be maximum e into a so the electric flux through this curved surface area is 0 because my electric flux here the normal is perpendicular to the e e into a cos 90 then is going to be 0 so the total flux through the Gaussian surface I may write phi equals to e into a here we have a two surface this e into a and this e into a I can simply write 2 times e into a cos 0 is going to be 1 so this is the total flux of the Gaussian surface here the flux due to only this flat surface as well as this flat surface the flux through the curved surface area is going to be 0 in this case next I am going to write from the expression of flux from the Gauss's law so from Gauss's law I may write phi equals to e into sorry uh, phi is equal to q by epsilon naught phi is equal to q by epsilon naught so how can i find this q so we know the charge density of the sheet is q is equal to sorry sigma equal to q by a therefore q is equal to sigma into a so i can simply rewrite this equation sigma into a by epsilon naught is my equation so this is my equation 1 and this is my equation 2 this is from the experiment and this is from the law if I equate these two equation 1 equals to 2 then I may write 2 into e into a equals to sigma a by epsilon naught so listen a a gets cancelled again my e equals to sigma by 2 epsilon naught so if you want to write this as a vector I am going to use a a unit vector so my unit vector is parallel to this so here is going to be two thing this is parallel to the electric field so this is the electric field at point p either this point or this point so electric equal distance okay so electric field at point p due to the uniformly charged thing infinitely uh, infinitely long uniformly charged thin sheet right but the beauty of this equation is my electric field which is independent of r if you're measuring here same value measuring here same value measuring here same value so my electric field which is independent of r so this is very very important uh, result here if you plot a graph between the position vector r versus the electric field i'm getting the uh, same electric field at any point so my electric field which is independent of r so this is the beauty of this equation so my electric field which is independent of r two parallel thin sheets infinitely long okay so i have a, a uniformly charged thin sheet here you have another uniformly charged thin sheet here okay one is made up of positive charge another made up of negative charge so in this case i'm going to consider a thin sheet is going to be positively charged so I have another sheet this is going to be a negatively charged this is minus sigma this is plus sigma listen carefully so I have a two thin sheets now my target is to find electric field at this point and this point and this point so I'm going to answer three points one is this point this point and the outside the plates so i'm going to consider this my point one 
is my point 2 this is my point 3 now listen carefully my electric field which is independent of r this is a very, very very important property here listen carefully electric field due to this positive charge at this point it's going outwards e plus right so my electric field due to this negative charge is going inwards e minus so the net electric field at point 1 e1 equals to sigma by epsilon naught minus sigma by epsilon naught equal to 0 because two electric field in the same magnitude but in the opposite direction it's going to be 0 if i'm measuring here my electric field at point 3 due to this plus charge it's going in this direction e plus electric field due to this minus charge is exactly in the opposite direction but the same magnitude sir actually this is closer to this this is far away from the point 3 but the beauty of this equation which is independent of r so using this property i can simply write electric field at point 3 i can simply write sigma by epsilon naught minus sigma by epsilon naught is going to be 0 sir next is sir i just want to find the electric field at point between the plates so electric field due to this positive charge is in this direction e plus electric field due to this negative charge is also in the same direction e minus so my electric field at point 2 i may write this is a between the plates e2 equals to sigma by epsilon naught actually 2 is there la, right i miss the 2 part sorry so 2 epsilon naught plus sigma by 2 epsilon naught equals to sigma by epsilon naught so this is my electric field at point 2 this is my equation 3 so the electric field between the plates only survive electric field outside the plate is going to be 0 because of the property of the my electric field which is independent of r ok so I just stop at this point if you like this video share it with your friends and subscribe our channel for the more content thanks for watching we'll meet in the next video